Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission worker. My guest today is Dave Dickens. Dave serves with Crew, and uh, he's been a guest on a a different recent podcast. Uh, But just to kind of reframe, uh, Dave is the uh, MPD director with his wife uh, over uh, U.S. Campus Ministries, but also that includes sending uh, some ministry workers overseas. And and Dave, you've been with Crew for about 30 years. Is that correct? Uh, Yeah, so 30 years. I'll be 31 this summer. And 13, uh, doing field work at Ball State University, uh, reaching uh, students with the gospel there. And then last 17 years uh, here in Orlando at our uh, national campus office, uh, directing uh, MPD for the campus ministry. Great, great. Now, your wife, Nancy, I know that she serves with you, and I I certainly intend to have her on as a podcast guest as well at some point. Uh, But... uh, what was uh, a little bit of your story as a couple, just before we jump into our topic today, as far as raising support? Did you guys do it independently? Did you do it together for the first time from go? What, what was a little well, bit about, about your process? Yeah, from you? That's actually, yeah, it's, it's sort of interesting and a bit unique. Uh, when we, we did join staff together, and then, but we were two months pregnant uh, with our first, and uh, Nancy was uh, very, very sick that whole um, her whole pregnancy, actually with all four kids, um, <laughs> it was a challenge. Um, and um, in fact, we shouldn't have even, uh, we, we drove from Ohio out to California for new staff training wow. uh, with crew. She, she was throwing up in plastic bags the whole way out there. Oh. But we were young, we were passionate, we had a missionary call on our lives, and uh, we would not be dissuaded <laughs> by anyone, including our parents. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we made it out there and limped through training, um, came back, and she was still in bed <laughs> most most of our initial uh, support raising. She would always rally uh, for the support appointment, and uh, she would make it uh, somehow uh, as we went to visit with people and present our ministry, and uh, she would make it through those, but uh, most of the time, uh, she would stay at home. And so it was really interesting. Uh, a lot of the uh, responsibility uh, for raising support really fell to me. And even after uh, we reported and as we continue to raise support, because you never finish raising support, um, because we really set that pattern early of mm-hmm. me doing most of the MPD work, that's sort of the, the pattern that we kept until about 15 years ago when actually she wanted to become a support coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nancy, you've never actually even raised support. <laughs> and she thought, well, that's true, but I'm ready now. And so she, uh, her and I became much more of a team and our own support raising. And uh, then she started uh, coaching. And now uh, she uh, really is leading uh, in amazing ways um, in the campus ministry uh, with, with PD. So, uh, well, you did one thing right there. I want to jump on that and ask you a quick question because I, I know what you meant, but I'm concerned a listener might not. And you said okay. we're never done raising support. I'm sure okay. some people almost turned it off right there. <laughs> <laughs> so bear with us, friends. Bear with us. Uh, Dave, just unpack that statement real quick so that, so that well, those that are running in fear might, might slow down a little bit. Yeah. Well, you know, the reality is you're always losing support. At least that's been our experience. You know, maybe that's not true for everyone, but I think it might be. <laughs> uh, you know, we have, you know, partners who have to leave, you know, every year from our team. And then, especially as our kids were young and we were having kids, you know, our needs were increasing um, every year. And so there was always a sense where we needed to be making up for support that we were losing, uh, but then also looking forward. Uh, and need to make increases, you know, to our salary or our, ben- our, our medical and dental insurance going up that we would need to raise more money for. Mm-hmm. So just the reality that uh, it was never the season, you know, those initial eight months were uh, in terms of full-time NPD. Right. Um, but uh, this reality is we try to 
do something every, even every on a weekly basis um, to continue to engage potential new partners, asking people uh, for increases. Um, and even just the cultivation side of making sure our prayer letter gets out every month and that we're doing a good job in communicating uh, with our partners. Right, right. Uh, so Keep that's what knows it doesn't dominate your time. It's, it's a no. part of your normal rhythm, right? Right, yes. Yeah. And, uh, that's, and that's what we encourage our staff in terms of their, uh, once they've reported, uh, we really encourage that kind of perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an integrated priority uh, with their work priorities. Um, although I tell you what, those who think it does go away and don't give it that weekly, uh, maybe a monthly attention, uh, those are the ones, those are our senior staff uh, that within a few years of reporting uh, will find themselves, uh, their accounts in deficit yeah. and needing to be pulled off their assignments, mm-hmm. get back to full-time uh, MPD. Yeah. And I'm not have, sure, Dave, I, you've been training support raising for years. I, I've been able to uh, see some of your your trainings, and I'm not sure how much of the boot camps maybe you've ever stepped into, but um, one of the things that we encourage people to understand is that, you know, support raising maintenance, and people hate that word, and I realize that, but that <laughs> that thing of understanding where you're at, what you need, where you're going, it really doesn't need to dominate your schedule, but if it's a few hours out of your schedule on a weekly basis, just simply right. praying for people, connecting with those that are on your team, being aware you know, being sensitive, uh, you'll see a lot less turnover than if you wait oh. until the crisis moment. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah, just yeah, having those communication pieces, um, yeah, in your, again, back to sort of your work rhythm, mm-hmm. uh, monthly rhythm uh, is just so significant. The way I think about it, every year people are making choices about their missionary dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have new opportunities. If they feel connected to us, if they uh, really feel a part of our vision, mm-hmm. uh, if they've heard from us on a regular basis, um, they're gonna they're gonna want to stick with us. Mm-hmm. And we've had people tell us that that they've been so encouraged by our consistent communication uh, over the years that even as they think about people that they might need to drop, uh, we're really low on on the list. Um, mm-hmm that in terms of dropping because they feel so connected to us, our lives, our family, and our, and our ministry. You're, you're a good investment for the sake of the kingdom, but also you're a good investment relationally. Uh, mm-hmm. when, when those are both true, yeah, you're a lot yeah. less likely. It doesn't mean things don't come up. Uh, by the way, parenthetically, Dave, I don't know if you have a number on this. I've recently spoken with a couple of people who have suggested that it's not abnormal to perhaps plan that you might lose three to five percent per year. Now, mm-hmm. that's not a hard and fast figure, and that's not going to be the same. I've gone a couple of years where I don't know I've lost hardly anybody off my mm-hmm. team. And I know I've had a couple of years where I had several people that lost their job or had a massive life change, mm-hmm. and it probably exceeded uh, that five percent. But it it, it seems, in at least some school of thought, that that's a good idea to keep in mind. Um, that you're going to need to increase by 5% every year, whether it's because of loss or maybe it's just because your healthcare went up. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds really accurate. We don't have, we don't have that specific uh, data. I would say numbers wise, uh, our experience is that we're losing about two partners a year. Uh, and again, I'm not sure what that equals in terms of percentage. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we're definitely looking to replace um, two partners uh, every year. Right. And that's a perfect segue for even this topic that you and I uh, intended to talk about on this particular podcast, which is not making money the focus and really reframing how we approach our ministry partner development work. So uh, obviously there, there's questions that we have to, to ask, you know, and, and answer in, in an affirmative way, uh, such as, you know, am I providing for my family? Am I living out God's call on my life? You know, what are my core values? Those sorts of things. But let's dig a little bit deeper mm-hmm. into that topic. Uh, so, so go ahead and, and frame that for us, that, that whole thing of reframing our MPD work, to, mm-hmm. to use that word in two different ways there, Dave. And just kind of take us down a little bit of a journey of, of the perspective people need. Yeah. Well, I first heard about this idea, although I think it's fairly common uh, in, in business and industries, um, about reframing uh, the activity. And I first heard of this from Michael Hyatt, and you could Google Michael Hyatt reframing uh, the activity. 
But thinking about something that you do uh, in a in a right perspective, because we could think about support raising as I, I need I need to raise money, um, or we can reframe that uh, in having uh, I think a better, more engaging, and more motivating uh, purpose you know type of statement. Uh, for what we mean when we we raise support Mm -hmm. and so I know for me uh, as someone who's married and has a family well when I think about raising support I'm thinking about uh, providing uh, for my family (laughs) in fact usually I'll make support calls on Saturday on Saturday morning and I'll say to uh, to Nancy uh, before I walk into my home office well I'm getting ready to provide well for my family (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> as I walk walk into the into the office, and that's just helpful. Uh, it puts it at a very obviously a much more you know significant uh, perspective uh, purpose uh, that really I find to be really motivating uh, and engaging in terms of you know that particular you know making phone calls you know uh, raising support, mm-hmm. um, and even actually with our family it goes even a little bit um, deeper. Uh, for us, although that's that is significant, what I just mentioned. But years ago, Nancy and I uh, decided let's come up with our core values as, as a family, and um, so we listed those out and thought through those. And one of the core values uh, was to be fully funded. And because the reality is that we could not really be the family that God's called us to be uh, unless we had the financial support. Uh, to be able to live that out. Like one of our values is fun. And so we're committed to taking vacations um, once or twice a year. Uh, We're committed that we would go out as a family every so often uh, to dinner. Well, those things take money. Those things, (laughs) things, especially as the kids get older and eat more. And... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, the reality was, unless we were living out our core value of being fully funded, we really actually couldn't live out some of the other core values that we had for us as a family. Right. Um, another value that we've had um, as we talk about our vision for our kids is that they are attracted to missionary service in part because they have seen firsthand how God provides for his workers. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's so significant. And how often are actually, you know, kids of missionaries, in fact, we see this in crew, uh, who are not attracted to joint staff because they've experienced how much hardship uh, their parents and their family experienced uh, on things related to finances you know, over the years. Yeah. So, again, getting back to <laughs> your question about what we mean by reframing the activity. So when I walk into uh, the office, I'm thinking about providing for my family. I'm also thinking about I am living out the core values that we've embraced as a part of who we are uh, as a family as I sit down uh, to make phone calls. And even, you know, as we thought about on our last or talked about on the last podcast, having those, having that right perspective, uh, I think, uh, is, is so significant. Definitely. Aaron, for you, uh, are there particular things that come to mind and even in your own support raising that um, as you think about it being more than raising money uh, that you found to be helpful? Well, I've really, over the years, uh, got this so wrong, especially early on. I, I'm not sure, Dave, how much of my early story uh, that you've heard, but uh, Micah, May, and I trained the uh, Support Raising Solution boot camps. And uh, one of our half joking, totally true things that we say at every boot camp is that we are extremely qualified to facilitate this event because <laughs> we were such incredible failures for a few years. And uh, uh, part of my failure is I approached people like an ATM machine. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really didn't even understand or connect their role and what I was doing is something they're going to be excited about that. They were true partners in it, that I was only the hands and feet of the ministry that the vision that we were focused on together. Uh, I I didn't get that. I really more thought of it as, well, 
God gave you money. He wants you to give, him, give me money and I'll go do this stuff, right? You know? That so, sounds, yeah, that should work fine, yeah. And, it, and that informed poorly, that informed so many things about how I, how I went forward. And it, it affected um, how infrequently I would send out a newsletter instead of, mm-hmm. you know, we, we definitely recommend people have some sort of monthly communication, um, preferably a, a simple, short vision you know, uh, focus, you know, newsletter, but, uh, above and beyond that, I wasn't building relationships. I wasn't caring for, I just, it wasn't a partnership. It, it, mm-hmm. it was a lot more like, uh, you know, I, I'm selling them a widget and the widget, mm-hmm. I'm going to go do what I said I'm going to do. That's it. Mm-hmm. Instead of a partnership that was more like, Hey, I'm going to a party. <laughs> it's for the kingdom. Do you want to come with me? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so as a result, um, you know, I've changed. Thank the good Lord up above, you know, I've, mm. I've changed now where, you know, as part of my reframing has been when I sit down with somebody and, uh, and actually right now, as we talk, Dave, uh, uh, my, my board of directors that I'm, I'm accountable to has, has said, Hey, you know, this has gone up. This cost of ministry has gone up over here as well. Your healthcare went up another, uh, I think $130 a month in January. Like a few things happened. My mm-hmm. board said, Hey, we, we want you to, to increase by about $500 a month uh, mm. over the next couple of months. We want you to raise that. And so I'm taking time to invite a couple of few more people to my team. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be more than a couple of few. We'll see, we'll see what it takes. If you get to help others as they're raising their support, a fair question to consider is who's helping you? Who's pouring into you and helping you increase your capacity and ability as a support raising leader, trainer, or coach? May I suggest that you be sure that you're a part of the SRS network because it can be a matter of access. Access to a discount to the Support Raising Leaders Conference, access to the online course SRS Foundations, and access to the SRS Network member resource page. The SRS network is designed to resource you and connect you with others who are also trying to develop support raisers for the Great Commission. Make sure that you are a part of the SRS network. All that to say, it's a partnership. And so, yeah, I know I need the finances. I know there's a clear $500 more monthly goal in my near future that I need to work towards. But uh, when I sit down with someone, I make it really clear. And it's not just like, you know, smoke and mirrors. It's really clear. Mm -hmm. I'm inviting you to be a part of something that's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. Uh, First and foremost, I want you to bring your heart. I I want you to, I want you to step into this if God is leading you to. I want you to really plan to pray. Don't just look at the newsletter when you get it, but if you're going to skim through it, skim down to the prayer requests. You know, (laughs) like I want you to be active in prayer and yeah, I want you to give money for sure. In fact, you know, I'll I'll suggest an amount and that's what they can do and all that stuff. But the partnership aspect Mm -hmm. has changed significantly in, in my heart, in my presentation and how I even talk to uh, not only potential supporters, but, but my actual supporters. I, I regularly thank them for their partnership in the gospel that we get to do together. So. Mm. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's why I'm so grateful. And I know a lot of ministries have adapted this language that we call it ministry, uh, dev- ministry partner or partner development, ministry partner development. Yeah. And just that emphasis that we're, we're, yeah, we're raising money. You know, that's, uh, that has to happen. Um, but we're more excited about the partners, you know, that are joining, uh, joining with us. Years ago, actually, I don't know if you know this, Aaron, but we called, uh, we called MPD, Ministry Partner Development and Crew, we called it Support Team Development. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, there's problems with that <laughs> on multiple levels. Okay. One is acronym, STD. Uh, <laughs> that, that became an issue. Uh, in- you know, I think there might need to be a rule that crew's not allowed to make any acronyms ever because they <laughs> end up being a problem later on don't they <laughs> they do they do but the other you know but another issue you know it has support in it um and so let's let's not think about it as support let's think it about it as ministry as ministry uh partner uh development and and that's the other thing too as we're sitting down as we're engaging with people uh just like you just like you said we have to have and this is part of reframing, you know, the activity as well, but we have to have that right perspective that we're uh, like you were talking about, that we're engaging uh, people in a bigger story uh, that we're giving them opportunity 
uh, to have an impact in a place in lives that they would not otherwise have be able to have impact that and even uh, we know from the scriptures that there's a blessing that they're going to experience as a result of their uh, as a result of their generosity mm -hmm. um, Philippians 4 17 where Paul was talking about the gifts that the church gave and he was grateful for their gift but he was even more excited about what God was going to do in them as a result uh, of their of their generosity and so again, when I'm sitting down to make calls, uh, work on support, getting ready to meet with somebody, um, I'm thinking too that in addition to, I'm living out my core values, I'm doing what God's uh, called me to do, um, I am being a good provider for my family. I'm also thinking about what's God doing, how's God using this in the life of this person uh, that he has <laughs> by <clears throat> his sovereignty, uh, has connected me with, and whether or not they even join me financially, there's that's not really the main question at that know. point. It's what does God want to do uh, in your life as a result of our connection, as a result of our relationship? You're so right. You're so right. But uh, you know, it's what happens, and I'm sure you see this within crew as well. People are like, no, why am I having this meeting if I'm not potentially getting money? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, and I tell you what, if that's our motivation, that's our only motivation. Again, it has to be part of why we're. <laughs> oh, we're sure. Yeah, to, it's, it's a goal. We're going to have to get there at some point. But, but if that is the extent of it, then in fact, let me read you. This is from Henry now. And I mentioned this book uh, booklet before the spirituality of fundraising. Oh. Um, here's how he describes this in, in terms of my ministry into someone's life. He says, fundraising from the point of view of the gospel says to people, I will take your money and invest it in this vision only if it is good for your spiritual journey, only if it is good for your spiritual health. In other words, we are calling people to an experience of conversion. You won't become poor, you'll become richer by giving. Uh, not to me, you're giving to the Lord, although you join my team, uh, you're, you'll become richer uh, as a result. And boy, that statement is stuck in my brain um, that the people joining my team is good for their spiritual journey. Uh, the Lord is, there's going to be a blessing that they receive uh, as a result of that. We don't know, we don't, we don't get specific in terms of what that will look like, or they're going to, the God's going to give them um you know, a financial blessing, you know, in return. Uh, that's not the promise. And we don't obligate God to act in a certain way or to respond in a certain way to someone's generosity. But we see throughout scriptures uh, that there is this re uh, reaping and sowing, sowing and reaping uh, mm -hmm. that we can, we can look even for, okay, Lord, how might you honor, you know, that gift that I just gave? Not under obligation, not assuming anything, uh, but we know that there's going to be a spiritual blessing uh, that results. And so when I think about calling someone, going on that appointment, I can with confidence know that the Lord is going to bless them uh, as a result of even taking the time to connect with me, you know, I, I believe. Wow. Wow. Well, good words, my friend. Hey, we're going to wrap up this podcast because I think that uh, you've spoken very well to the topic at, at hand. And this, this is a good conversation, partially we're, we're, it's still kind of an open because it, it, it's constantly an open thing. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's something that you are engaging with, uh, living, you know, raising and living off support. It's never a, a done deal um, because it, it's, a, it's a spiritual process. It's not just a financial thing. Um, right. I think that's part of how we wanted to reframe it. We, wanted mm -hmm. to, we don't want people to think of it as, well, I just got to get 50 mm -hmm. quarters and then I'm good. I never got to do it again. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Uh, Not much. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we haven't discouraged too many people with the reality that MPD never goes away. <laughs> and uh, praise the Lord that it doesn't. Yeah, uh, yeah. Things and, that and we, we've talked about. Yes, so true. Because um, you know, and you've seen some of the the same things that I have. That sometimes people come and support raising from a terrified of it to I'll do it just because it's a part of a job, but it's so wonderful when people reach that point where they realize I get to raise mm -hmm. support because it is a part of not only blessing others, but me being blessed us together in, in building the kingdom. And uh, mm -hmm. that's a wonderful place to be. I, I, uh, 
I actually kind of feel bad for people that uh, think, well, I, I'm going to raise support for three years and then I can stop. And I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so anyway, well, my friend, thank you for your time today. Thank you for framing this reframing discussion so well. And uh, God bless you, Dave. Uh, thanks so much, Aaron. Appreciate you and all the great work you guys are doing. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content. Please visit supportraisingsolutions.org slash feedback to share your thoughts and questions. Also, wherever you download your podcast from, be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.